I just wanted to connect to the car. You know, we're driving in Fukushima. I just wanted to see see if if uh, how things are going. Asbi, Joe, can you come online? Hi, Asbi, Joe, can you hear? You're on mute right now. Yes. If you... Hi, howdy. Hey, um, howdy, we howdy. Are in in J Village, uh, and uh, here I am. A rainy day. Rainy. And uh, we're in Jay Village. We arrived, and uh, you know, I'll just sort of show around. We're, are we ready to start now? Kasi, can we keep Ray on? Are we ready to go? Yeah. So we have Ray on the line, and Ray just wants to say hi, and maybe we can have a chat. Chat, and if, if Joe is around, sure. Or... sure. Uh, Joe's here, and uh, Emma's over here, and here's. Uh, I'll, I'll just sweep around and show you the scenario. Uh, here, there's a uh, Junya Madeira. And Emu, and the Safecast car, and a fire truck. Yes. And the famous white, uh, you know, dome uh, sports facility at J Village. Village. Yes. Uh, and the follow car. So it's um, rainy, but this is, um, you know, an important uh, historical place, right? Regarding the post disaster. Yes. And J Village was was something that was fairly new when it, when the accident happened. Yeah, there. You want to come over here? <laughs> yeah. And it, it wasn't it? Isn't it? Wasn't it a sport facility specifically for for J soccer for soccer or something? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. And kore mo nihongo mo shabari mas kedo. Ima J Village ni mas kara. J Village hi doni rekisteki na basho desu. Toko ni Fukushima ano no jiko no ato ne. So J Village was built for uh, training for uh, Japanese J J League soccer. That's why it's called J Village. Uh, and after the disaster, because it's pretty close to Fukushima, but a safe distance to Fukushima Daiichi, but a safe distance, it was used as the emergency staging area for all of the military assistance and the helicopters and the, the medical and everything. Uh, U.S. military troops were here. Uh, and uh, and now it's, you know, turned back into a sports facility uh, planning to be used for the Olympics. I got a quote, I got, Zuto jiko na to ga, taihen na, ano, so you kin kichitai no. あの、ま、本当にあの、あの、何ですか。あ、手を取れにたちは政府にたちとか、あの、あの、自衛隊とかアメリカ軍のあ、友達のたちとか、みんなやったんですよ。大変だったけど、今はあの、今度のオリンピ
was a, just a, from where we were to the horizon, it seemed like, with huge emergency response vehicles. And it was, uh, it was such a weird uh, experience to be, uh, this is basically as far as we could get at that time to get uh, to measure radiation. Joe, how, how long, how far after the event was, was that, that you were up there? Uh, that would have been in April. It was the second Big Geige drive. So it would have been like, I don't know, April 20th. So about six weeks after the, maybe uh, five or six weeks after the disaster. Joe, I'm going to say, 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 I'm 地帯の車とかあのその消防車とかあのえ救急車とかねあの兵隊の車とかばっかりだったね And this is also where Prime Minister Nato Khan his helicopter landed right uh, and uh, you know it was all full of you know emergency response So 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 Asbi it would be nice if you could also uh, introduce June and Imo and have them Yeah let's go see June and Imo and I will and, uh, and talk to June and Imo so, June and Hello, Imu. Good morning. Get closer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Can you say louder? Can you hear me? Jun san, can you hear Yeah, we are from uh, Isla Kamarasu. Jun san, yeah. I, can, I can hardly see your face, so maybe. You maybe you want to get a little yeah. bit closer yeah. and see yeah. yeah, we're going to see Hi, you. June. Hi, June. Hi. <laughs> Too close. Not Too close. close. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, he's fashionable. And here's Emu. Hello. And we've been working hard to sell. <laughs> yeah. And, and the vehicle, and there's some students in the car that with Jun's car, yeah. the black car, which is a follow vehicle. So, Jun san wa, ano, J Village wa, ano, hajimete kita wa itsu datta ni? Actually, this is my first time. Your first time? I was yeah. asking Jun when he first came to J Village. This is his first time. Yeah. Yeah. I saw so many news. But... Yeah. Lots of news. And Jun san, so, where are you from? Where, where are you based? Uh, I'm based in Aizu Wakamatsu. Yeah, so Aizu is the western part of Fukushima Prefecture. Didn't get much fallout, uh, but still it's part of Fukushima and has the same reputational problems as the rest. Yeah, it's a hundred... Yeah. Oh, some hundred guys are, are... Wait. What's that sound? Do you hear this? Yeah. Yes. So... Everything's normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, life, life, life. Nothing as good as life. And yeah. and uh, yes. And what about Emu? Emu, how about you? This is your first time to J Village. Yes, this is my first time to J Village. So should I do? Uh, yeah, Nihon Can you hear me better on this yes. mic? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, <laughs> everybody's going away. So yes, this is my first time in J Village. Um, I've been involved in SACAS since 2018. Um, I did my bachelor's and master's in Tokyo Noko Daigaku and I'm doing my doctors now in citizen science. So, yes, and um, should I say it in Japanese again, maybe? No, <laughs> yeah. So, yes, this is えっと、環境についてあの、東京の高大学で学部と推進をしております。今は市民科学の研究、ドイツの大学の方で博士課程で勉強しています。uh, a report about 10 years after Fukushima and um, I also had a radio interview last week about um, agriculture in Fukushima. えっと、先週、先月ですね。Fukushima yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Emu, we met in Hong Kong two years ago at a, at a big um, workshop organized by a National Geographic for 
citizen science projects in Asia. And uh, she liked our project, liked SACAS, and instantly got involved and has now become a very, very active and important member while doing her graduate work. So she's a scientist and a great communicator. And I'm not surprised that the German TV uh, people and radio people are picking up on her because she's trilingual, uh, German, Japanese, English, uh, and looks good on camera. So I think we'll see a lot more of uh, of her. Yes, that, oh. that would be, would be fantastic. So, so, so Asbi, I, I, I think everybody is kind of curious, what are we going to do today with the car and where are we going to go and give us a little bit of a, a, a walkthrough of the schedule and, and, and yeah. while you do that, maybe somebody can hold your camera so that it doesn't wobble too much. Yeah, um, maybe Joe, Joe can come hold the camera. Yeah, that would be uh, great. So, it's hard in the rain. Okay, yeah. Hang on, let's turn around. Yep. Are we good? Yeah. Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, great. Yes. Um, yeah, so today, as we said, we're starting in Jay Village, which is sort of south of uh, Fukushima Daiichi. And the car, the shift gas car, will be driving northward uh, over the course of the day, stopping at several places. The next stop for us will be Tomioka, Tomioka Station. Uh, we'll, we've been visiting there a lot. There's some things to talk about there. Uh, we will go to... Um, uh, meet with uh, Mr. Sasaki and Kyrene Tyra, our good uh, uh, colleagues, uh, who will go into the exclusion zone and report from inside the exclusion zone in Okuma. Uh, then we will go to uh, the approach road right in front of Fukushima Daiichi, where we have uh, placed a new sensor recently. Uh, and then uh, we will go to Ono Station, which is an unusual area that's in the exclusion zone, but they reopened the station. It's kind of very weird. Uh, then we will go to um, the area called Kutaba, uh, and then Ukedo, which was very seriously destroyed by the tsunami and also has radiation issues, and there are some memorials and there are things to see there. Uh, and then we will head to Odaka, which is in the southern part of Minami Soma City, uh, and uh, we will have a big, like a one-hour session with local residents, uh, remembering 10 years ago and thinking about the future. And during the course of the day, we'll have people logging in from all over Japan and overseas and commenting and uh, there will be the musical interludes as well and some other uh, you know sessions that uh, will be running out of your office there Tokyo right can, can you plug the big uh, we also have uh, a new uh, variant of the big IV called the big IV cast uh, it's a normal big IV but it is uh, sending a stream of data live to a web page uh, and we will be able to starting from now you'll be able to follow uh, the car and follow the radiation levels uh, where we are by uh, watching that page. And I think we're set up to display that page through one of the Zoom uh, Zoom channels, right? Yes. Uh, so so um, uh, for, for those of you are, who are following us on YouTube, uh, in the description, there is actually the, the URL. Uh, if you click on that, you will go and see uh, the live data as it is being collected by that sensor. And you can also with that, you can follow where we're going. And uh, in that uh, thing, there is an option on the top. You can kind of select the last three hours or last six hours or last five minutes. So play with that a little bit to see kind of what works. But uh, if you hit it for the last three days, you can also see where the car was uh, the last three days when, when, when we were measuring. Uh, you can then also go to the SafeCost map on safecost.org. Uh, and there you can compare the levels with levels that we measured over the last 10 years. In the map, there is a function to go back in time. There's a time machine built in uh, and, and that allows you to select data as we measured it literally 10 years ago versus what it is today. And it gives you a very good idea how these levels have changed over time. And speaking out of my own measurement experience doing that over many years, these levels have come down quite a bit. I think J Village, where you guys are right now, my memory tells me about 1 to 1.5 microsieverts at that time. Uh, Joe may have a, and it was very yeah. spotty there as well. Joe, right, you know, if you walk, would walk around there, it would change quite a bit. I think today, I'm not sure what you guys are measuring. It's, it's probably 0 0.15 or 0 something. Yeah, it's 0 0.12 here. This place has been very thoroughly remediated. Uh, it was This place was actually never all that contaminated compared to places further north. Both here, uh, which is in Naraha, uh, was officially evacuated. This was the southern boundary of the exclusion zone at the earliest days. But the, even from the earliest days, the contamination here was moderate compared to places north and north uh, northwest. Yeah. Can you translate that? Okay. Um, 
、えー、っと、まあ、その理由としては、奈良浜町だったり、えー、っと、ここの JB1 は、他の場所に比べて、除染作業が優先的に行われたことがあります。Uh, I think we lost you, Emu.、Um, I think that was the part. You're sitting too close to each other. Uh, you're on mute, As Asby. But you're both on mute, I guess, right now. Okay, she's done. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you need, if you do that, you need to have one. Needs to be on mute. <laughs> yes, exactly. We muted, both, we, not, we muted it, but it still feeds back for some reason. Yeah, you know, it's it, one of those one of those things. It's one of those things, but it's good that it all works. We have great reception today, by the、yeah. way. The, the picture yeah, quality is fantastic, and、uh, that's also a thing. You know, when we were there ten years ago, many people、uh, may not know, but most of the communication was destroyed during the during the earthquake, and it was very difficult to use、uh, your mobile phone to call people. Actually, the mobile phone internet connectivity was actually better than phone connectivity, but it took years before normal、uh, reception was restored in the area where you guys are driving now. And even today, if you go off road, so to speak, of the main highways, etc., there are still areas where only few cell phone, the cell phone reception can be almost nothing because、uh, the exclusion zone or other areas have not been repopulated and they have put the cellular towers only there where people are right now. But if you go into the, more into the forest or you drive to Itate or something to the mountains, then、uh, it's very, very spotty still even today. Well, in Japan, wherever you go, it's very, very good. But、uh, this kind of is still after 10 years, there's so much uh, that, uh, that is still left as it was 10 years ago in that area specifically. Most of the areas outside of the exclusion zone, though,、uh, are very much recovered in, in many, many ways. Uh, radiation levels and et cetera have, have come down quite,、uh, quite significantly. But I think later today we're going to drive through、uh, the exclusion zone、uh, or part of the zone where things are more or less、uh, uh, still were left 10 years ago. And that gives a good impression as to you know, what, what has changed and what has not changed in those years.